How's it going, everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another gameplay commentary. And today, what I'd like to talk about is the Star Wars Battlefront 2 campaign. This is going to be my review on the campaign. I'm going to tell you about how the gameplay is, the graphics, the storytelling, and everything in between about it. Give you my thoughts and opinions on it, where they think they exceeded, where they failed, and where they did a pretty good job on it. Boom! Big ass explosion happened right there. But, anyways. Uh, this is a gameplay that was just ripped from my live stream here, so that's why you see me in the lower right hand corner. But I figured I'd give my two thoughts on the gameplay on the game here, so let's get right into it. So, as we all know, that this was a Star Wars story that's actually canon. So this is actually supposed to be, uh, you know, involved with the actual story of the game of actual franchise, I should say. Uh, obviously, the events take place right after the explosion of the Death Star and right before the events of The Force Awakens. So I kind of try to put, um, well, I would say, like a, a bridge between those two stories because a lot happened in uh, the 30 years, right, since uh, th for these events that take place. Though, uh, at the end, it was a little disappointing. I'll get into that later. Uh, well, first of all, the thing that instantly grabs you about this game is the visual fidelity. The graphics are absolutely amazing in this game. The best that have ever been done in a game, and rightfully so. Now, I am playing this on the Xbox One, uh, just so I could, I was able to, so I was able to stream it. But it plays at 60 FPS, and I believe it's at 900p, which I think was the same thing for uh, Battlefront One. Uh, a couple of years ago, so nothing surprising there. Uh, but uh, so, but it you know obviously I would much rather play this game on PC. It would look way better on the PC. But if I wanted to live stream it, I gotta play it on the console because my PC is that good. Isn't quite good enough to handle it. So, uh, but I'm sure you can downscale it. But if I, I could play it if um, if I wasn't live streaming. But anyways, uh, besides the point, YouTube stuff. <laughs> Uh, and so then, basically, the story is that you follow this main character that you're playing, playing as Aiden Versio, Verso, one of the ways you pronounce the last name. Most people have heard multiple versions, and you see her uh, point of view from the Empire. Now, when I first heard that this is going to be a game from the point of view of the Empire, I was like, "Wow, this is going to be really cool because it's going to be giving us something, a new perspective in the Star Wars story." Because Star Wars has always been very clear cut of who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, you know, it's very easy to tell it to. There isn't much in the way of gray area when it comes to Star Wars, Star Wars st storytelling because even um, what George Lucas has even said that Star Wars is made for 12-year-olds. It's made for kids, and it's easier to understand. And it gets, like, he, George Lucas was inspired to make Star Wars after watching, like, these sci-fi, um, you know, shows when he was a kid and really wanted to kind of replicate that. And of course, obviously, he did an amazing job of doing it. In Star Wars, it can be enjoyed by children, and it, can, and it can also be enjoyed by adults. And that's why this franchise has gone to ex extraordinary heights. <laughs> and so, but back on the game, though, so I'm just trying to say that um, you know the, the storytelling usually is very clear, cl clear cut who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. But in this one, you're like, wait, am I supposed to be rooting for the, the bad guys in this one? Now I'm kind of excited for that to try to experience a Star Wars game from that perspective. And the game really does a good job uh, setting up that story in the first act of the game. Where uh, where Aiden is caught on a starship and she's like being inter interrogated by the rebels. And you're like, wow, these rebel guys are seemingly rather... Um, like jerks, like I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't get on board with these guys right now, so I can kind of understand why some people are part of the Empire because, you know, and the normally the Empire is just uh, played out to be such an evil uh, presence in the game. You go like, when you think about it, like, how is anybody with any moral conscience even being involved, wants to be involved with this uh, game, be involved with this right now, and it's totally understandable. Uh, here, let me fast forward a little bit just so I get some gameplay going here. No, I'll just skip forward. Okay, I'll skip forward a little more. Anyways, though, so I thought that was really interesting storytelling. That was at, there was an opportunity for that in this game, and um, you know it does a really good job of doing that. Now uh, I will say uh, I'll leave all the spoilers towards the end of the video. I'll let you guys know when the spoilers do happen, and so uh, so we got that. The storytelling sets itself up really, really good. 
Uh, you do get a chance to play as some of the classic Star Wars characters, which is really great. Uh, you know, obviously, if you want to play a Star Wars game, you want to play as some Jedi's and you know, blow stuff up and you know, it's really and do some star fighting action, which is great. And so they did a great job on that as well. And the they, the flight controls have been greatly improved, and so where it's much more intuitive, it's not as uh, <laughs> as uh, intense as it was was it was back in Battlefront 1 so they definitely improved on that uh, and then the controls are super easy to get down when it comes to flying I really appreciate that and um, yeah but the, the thing is with this with the campaign though is that if you've played on normal difficulty I was able to play the entire game in one night the entire ca campaign in one night I believe it was like four and a half hours long four to four and a half hours that's about the average time playing on normal for this campaign and you might go like oh wow that's really short for a campaign which it sure certainly is usually with these kind of shooter fps campaigns i expect normally like eight hours generally for a campaign uh but yeah but this one you know just four hours man so it's really short but the thing is though that was it felt like a long four hours uh, after a while, I feel like some of the gameplay elements were being recycled a little too much to where I felt that it was overstaying its welcome, certainly. Um, and it, after like the third or fourth, you know, space, you know, fighter, fighting mission, you're like, okay, it's kind of the same thing we just did before, but this time I'm in an X-Wing instead of a TIE fighter kind of thing. And... Um, it just got a little repetitive, and the, they didn't think they really spent much time to spice up the gameplay a whole lot. Uh, I think they were kind of relying on the Star Wars, the fact that you're playing Star Wars, and the fact that it's a Star Wars story. I think they were relying on that a little bit too much. Uh, there are elements in this game where they try to make you do stealth, which is great. You know, try to vary up the gameplay, obviously, instead of just having to blow everything up. But the thing is, though, these missions that set you up to do stealth things, uh, they're kind of pointless uh, because the whole point of doing a stealth mission is that uh, either when you're caught the mission fails or when you're caught it's a lot e you're when you're caught you have to fight off a lot of bad guys and so it makes it a lot harder to play through the mission that's the whole point of a stealth having stealth options in the game but then obviously with the way gaming is now everyone gets a gold star and you have to please everybody and so um there are missions where like the guy's like, okay, sneak up on him. You can you can take him out. But then all you do is just shoot him, and you end up shooting everybody else, and there's no consequences, and everybody wins basically. And there's no, there's really no point to doing anything anything stealthily in this game because it sets you up to do it. But it's much easier just to go in and just shoot everything. And so that's one aspect I feel like they really kind of you know they messed up on quite a bit. And that really kind of let me down. So it just kind of watered down the gameplay a little bit more. So basically, there's two types of things you're doing in the game. You're either shooting bad guys or you're flying in a ship. Which obviously, Star Wars, I get it, yeah. But usually, but there's ways to mix up like the shooting combat. You can add objectives uh, or thing, anything like that. Or certain, you can time have things timed or you could add obstacles or anything like that. Jump puzzles or something, you know, mix things up. And that didn't happen in this campaign. It's every mission is when you're on the ground, it's like what you're seeing on the gameplay right now. It's just cover to cover, going and shooting things and stuff like that. And if you're going out in space, you're flying around, you're blowing stuff up. And there's really there's no like escort missions or anything like that. It's kind of the same thing every mission. And that's uh, that's why the four hours of this game, you may sound really short, but after you're done playing it, you're like, well, I think after the first two hours of the game, you pretty much experience the entire game and you're really just kind of recycling mechanics, which was quite a bit of a letdown. Um, and so, uh, but the sound, let's see, like, by the way, so that's kind of how the gameplay worked out. Now, the sound is absolutely amazing. It's as authentic as you possibly can get with a video game. It's, it sounds like and feels like. I'm in a Star Wars game universe. I'm playing as a star, as a, I'm shooting as thing stuff as a, as a Tie Fighter, like you're seeing right here, or I'm blowing stuff up with a blaster. Like it just sounds and feels like Star Wars should, and it's amazing. They Dice did an absolutely amazing job with that. Now, um, let's see. Now, probably the only thing that's really left is the storytelling. So I will give you some spoilers here, spoiler warning, warning before anyone wants to. Uh, you know, get mad at me about this. Spoiler warning ahead here. And so, let's get right into it. 
three, two, one. You had your chance. <laughs> um, the storytelling on this game is it was very promising. Like I said before, uh, Aiden gets captured by the rebels and gets inter interrogated in the beginning of the game. And you're like, wow, the rebels seem not so great guys. There are not so great, many great guys in the uh, rebels or the alliance. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of going like, well, maybe I can see why Aiden wants to be part of the Empire. And that, um, you know, that's that's why she feels things are right. And I was going, wow, this is going to be a much more compelling story that you would normally get in a Star Wars game. You know, you can kind of play around seeing from the Empire's point of view and why people do like the Empire. But the thing is, though, like after like two, maybe three missions with Aiden being on the Empire, she sees the uh, Empire oppressing people, which obviously they've done in the past on her home but this is on her home planet though and she's like okay things got a little too serious here i can't believe you're doing this to our home planet here and you're following what the em emperor said and it's like really this is where you draw the line here Aiden. like you were clearly alive when the death star blew up alderaan a entire planet full of innocent people <laughs> but since they're you know for they they're they're holding people for the alliance it was justified right no it wasn't justified like I think if anyone sees that you go whoa okay that's like you're committing genocide right there that's a little too severe but uh, I guess I was able to look the other way when it came to that one um, and like we've seen the Empire oppress people over and over again and, the, and that's why you know it was going to be kind of hard to tell a story from the Empire's point of view and make it, you know, sympathetic for the Empire because obviously the Empire just almost does bad things all the time to, to people to try to, you know, gain more power. And so, and so then Aiden has a sudden turn of conscience and then she turns to the rebel side and you end up playing a very typical Star Wars story again, which was really disappointing. Um, I just thought that. I would really like to see, I mean, I, I kind of felt like that was probably going to happen anyways with the story of having Aiden switch to the Alliance because obviously only the good guys win. And, but the thing is though, you didn't have to have the good guys win or you didn't, and, but that not having the good guys win doesn't mean you have to have the bad guys win either. It's just that you know, try to tell a story from the point of view of the Empire and why there are people in the Empire and they feel this is the right way to go about, you know, controlling the amp controlling or governing the galaxy. And it just I was really ex hoping for something exceptional and I got something very typical, <laughs> which is kind of a down which sucks, but you know, hey, it's kind of how it is. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you do get a chance to play as some of the iconic uh, Star Wars characters. Uh, you get to play as Luke, you get to play as Leia, you get to play as Han Solo, and you get to play as Kylo Ren at the very end, which is very felt very tacked on. Uh, but the thing about Luke Skywalker's mission was, <laughs> yeah, it went, you skip. So think of it like this: when you play when you play a Star Wars game, and you get the chance to play as Luke Skywalker, what do you think you're going to do? What do you want to do as Luke Skywalker? You want to stop the bad guys with him, right? You want to kill some mindless stormtroopers, maybe fight, maybe even fight the Emperor, stop Darth Vader, something, or stop Darth, some some Darth evil dude, you know, whatever. And um, you do that for, for Luke Skywalker, or Luke Skywalker's mission, you do that for a little bit, uh, the very beginning, like third of the game. Of his mission but then after that you're just killing and then you meet up with Dell one of the side characters and I'll show you right here you end up just killing bugs watch right here I'll show you this is all you do as Luke Skywalker you're the world you're the galaxy's best exterminator apparently you're just slashing bugs like when I'm playing as Luke Skywalker I'm not thinking I want to kill bugs when I'm playing as Luke Skywalker, I want to really mess some stuff up, use my force abilities on the bad guys, and stop something majorly evil from happening. Right here, Dell is just trying to, you're just defending Dell, just typing in some schematics into a thing right here, which you do, I think, what, three times, I think, in this game? Uh, once as Luke, once as Leia, and I think another time as Aiden, I believe, or something like that. So you do it like two or three times. So obviously recycling game content, but I'm just like, when I'm playing this, when I was playing this, at first I was like, okay, fun, I get to play as Luke Skywalker. And then once I get to this mission, I'm just like, 
Why am I killing bugs? I don't want to kill bugs, Luke Skywalker. I want to kill stormtroopers. Or, and, you know, other things besides bugs. <laughs> this is so, and it's just like, it drags on for far too long. And it's just ridiculous. And the funny thing is, you do the exact same thing as Kylo Ren. You kill bugs as Kylo Ren. Obviously not nearly as much as Luke Skywalker. But you can see right here, I cut out this clip from my live stream. This was four minutes of me slashing bugs. I just thought it was so ridiculous. And then in my live stream, when um, you get to play as Kylo Ren, and then you actually, I was playing, I'm like, you better not have him kill any bugs. This would be, this would be just too funny. And then you actually do. And I was cracking up. The stream was laughing as well. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is uh, Luke Skywalker's direct competition in the galaxy for the galaxy's best exterminator. Like, what the hell? I know I'm going on a rant about this, but I just thought that was just a dumb mission. I just thought it was dumb. It was really a huge letdown for me. Oh my gosh. Oh man. That was just, that was sad. And so, um, I guess my other major point I would have to talk about is uh, the fact is that Dell and Aiden get together. They're fan they love each other now and they're amazing together apparently, which I I didn't really necessarily see that romance happening at all. I kind of but then because I, when I was in the live stream playing, I was like these, you know, they're at the end of the game, they defeat the empire on Jakku and then they look around and just kind of look at each other and I was like, "Oh, you better not kiss. You better not kiss." And then they kiss. I'm like, "I didn't sense any love connection at all between the two of them there's like i mean obviously they went through a very tough situation together which you know you can definitely do that with other people and you don't have to fall in love with them but apparently in uh this game you have to fall in love with them apparently so i just felt that was rather ridiculous that the i the Aiden and dell got together and you know have a romance after that which i it felt kind of like how i felt the same way when it came to like if you guys watch Game of Thrones, spoilers on this one, by the way, uh, uh, Daenerys and Jon Snow hook up, and they bang, and they love each other now, which I did not feel that romance at all between them as well, so I felt very similar to this situation as well. And it was just, it felt like it was forced, it, it, it was not compelling, it didn't need to happen, in my opinion. So, there's that. And then, we at the very end, uh, there was, you know, after that scene, it goes decades later and then you get to uh play as kylo ren and the thing is though that like, that mission was really fun it was probably the most fun hero mission to play as because all the other ones felt like rather mundane and not too exciting except leia's actually leia's was good that was a good mission as well but um han solo i felt like was just rather small boring and kind of like just play throwing in there really and but with like and same thing with Kylo Ren's mission. But obviously, when you play as Kylo Ren, it was really freaking fun. It was awesome to play as him. And uh, but it just felt really tacked on and thrown in at the end, going just just to leave some form of open-ended kind of storytelling, so then they can have Battlefront Three or the Battlefront expansions come out and tell more story after with Kylo Ren searching for uh, the galaxy map to find Luke Skywalker. Um, but yeah, um, uh, overall, so with, those are my complaints about the storytelling. Uh, I felt like the game, so overall, I felt like the storytelling had a lot of promise and it started out really well. And then it just kind of fell down to a typical story of Star Wars, which left me a little disappointed. Uh, it just and there was just like leaps in judgments, and uh, I didn't feel like the reason why Aiden decided to leave the Empire to go to the Alliance was very compelling or much of a reason why. Like right when I was playing the game, like I was just questioning, like why would you do this? Why Aiden? Why would you? Why would you switch to the Alliance? Yeah, obviously there are oppressing people, but you've seen them do this before. They blew up an entire planet full of innocent people. Now this is, but when it's hitting your home, this is when it affects you. This is when you draw the line, apparently. And I just felt like that was not a very logical reason why she uh, decided to go to the Alliance. Because she is a high-ranking member of the Empire. She has grown up in the Empire. She believes in it. and But just one thing happens, and that's where she draws the line, apparently. Well, something that the Empire has done before. 
Uh, now, they said that Dell's version of switching over to the Alliance made a little bit more sense because when he interacted with Luke Skywalker, he saw like, oh, not all people who are against the Empire are bad. It makes So it's a little more compelling. Not the greatest story, but it kind of makes a little more sense on Aiden's side. Um, but that was my complaints with the story. I still enjoyed it. Uh, I just felt like it could have been more. They had opportunities to do a lot more with uh, with this game, storytelling wise. Um, but yeah, the gunplay was really fun. The star the starfighter missions are really fun as well. It's just that they kind of get recycled a little too much to the point where it's like, okay, well, I uh, yeah, already did this three times already, but let's keep doing it kind of thing. But, um, wow, I just realized we've been going for 21 minutes in this video, but I'm just ranting, man. And uh, this is just kind of how I feel about the campaign. Now, um, I'm, they did um, DICE deliberately leave this campaign rather short, and so then once the uh, DLC comes out for the story, which I think they do have campaign DLC coming for this game, uh, that it will kind of stretch it out to more, it'll add like maybe like an extra two hours each time, so then after the full game has been released, you know, the campaign lasts like eight hours possibly. So that could have been their technique behind this as well. So it'd be more episodic in their campaign storytelling rather than just one big chunk at once, which I've always wished that games, especially like in Halo, uh, Battlefront, uh, Call of Duty even, that when they release DLC content, that they also add more story elements to it to make it a little, you know, expand on what was already been told. Because obviously with this game, they made a huge leap from at the end of the Battle of Jakku, then go many decades later, and then they cut to uh, Kylo Ren and Del. And I just thought that was like, well, what happens everything in between? Like, I want to know, you know, obviously, like, the uh, the, new, the um, new Order still around, doing the bad stuff, but um, whatever. Overall, though, I'd say the game was fun. The graphics, like I said, amazing. The immersion uh, that the DICE captures with these Battlefront games is absolutely amazing. Absolutely top-notch. Cannot give them any more praise than that. Like, it's absolutely amazing. Um, the gameplay is alright. And the storytelling is okay. Uh, I feel like they could have done a lot more. I would have liked to see more. Uh, but overall, I would probably give the story, like, uh, the campaign of this game, like a, like a B plus, honestly. Like, the gameplay itself and the visuals, the immersion of playing Star Wars is uh, top notch. And it really carries this game, really carries this game. Uh, because the storytelling not, is what really knocks it down. That's my terrible flying right there. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this far into the video. We're 23 minutes in. I didn't expect this video to be that long, but yo man, I'm a passionate Star Wars fan. I had to get my two cents out there, and this is what I feel about the uh, campaign of Star Wars Battlefront. I hope with the expansions, they have more storytelling. I may rent the game again. I will not buy this game due to the star cards with microtransactions. Because even though they removed the microtrans buying of microtransactions in this game, now the game is grind to win instead of pay to win. The problem still exists. Nothing's been fixed. The game multiplayer is completely screwed over, which sucks. Because this game plays really fun, and it looks amazing. I want to play a great Star Wars game, but EA, your greed had to destroy it for me. Damn it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below what you guys' thoughts are on the video or on the uh, campaign for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Overall, I say B plus. It's actually not too bad. Uh, and so, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Check out the videos on the screen right now if you want to see more content from me. Tap the bell for notifications. Leave a like if you want to see some more content like this. I will make a Call of Duty campaign review as well. And anyways, guys, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.